It was a winter like no other. Saskatchewan was frozen by record temperatures, buried under a record snow. And then the winds began to howl. Storms raged across the province for more than a week, with tragic consequences for a family living near Ogama. 1947 blew in with a vengeance. A staggering 40 inches of snow fell, more than double the average. Temperatures dropped to 40 below. The wind hit speeds of more than 70 miles an hour. It was a deadly combination. Whiteouts may travel dangerous, if not impossible. One farmer dug a tunnel across his yard. Another cut a hole in his barn roof to get inside to milk the cows. Animals left outside died in the bitter cold. Roads and rail lines were choked with snowdrifts. A train near Weyburn was completely buried in snow. Many towns were running out of food and fuel. By the end of January, southern Saskatchewan was locked in the unforgiving grip of winter. Well, it was a horrible winter. It, it stormed almost every day. One day it come from the southeast, the next day it come from the northwest. Seemed like it never quit. It's a winter Helen Schoenfield will never forget. She was a young wife with two children living on a farm near Ogama. Her grandparents, John and Bertha Arneson, were visiting from Maidstone. They planned to leave on February the 2nd to visit their daughter's farm five miles away. It was a beautiful, beautiful day, mild. Water uh, dripping off the roof, uh, just a beautiful day. Helen's husband, Art, hitched up the cutter, loaded in his in-laws, and set off cross country. They hadn't heard the weather forecast. A mile out, they were in the heart of a blinding snowstorm. The snow was so bad, they couldn't see nothing. And the one horse got down in the snow, and he couldn't get her out. So then they unhooked them from the sleigh cutter. They set off on foot. The Arnesons were numb from the cold. Art tried to hoist Grandma onto the horse, but she was too weak to sit. He tried to get Grandma up on the horse and thought he could have got her home, but he said, you know, he'd get her up on it and then she'd just fall over on the other side. Art made a life and death decision. He left Grandma behind. In the blinding snow, he also lost sight of Grandpa Arneson. When he finally staggered home that evening, Art was alone. Exactly what happened that terrible afternoon, Helen doesn't know. Her husband, now dead, never talked about it again. From, say, at, at noon till it was about 7 o'clock at night, was, there were seven hours there that they were out there battling in that, that horrible weather. Desperate, Art set out again that night to round up a search party of neighbors, but they were forced to wait out the storm. The frozen bodies of John and Bertha Arneson were found the following day, just a mile from the Schoenfield farm. All these years later, Helen remembers like it was yesterday. Every year on the 2nd of February, I relive it, every bit of it. It was the most tragic day of that deadly winter. Early that same morning, the storm claimed the lives of six girls and a nun at an orphanage in Prince Albert. Fire started in a pile of coal that was damp from the snow. In all, 30 people across Western Canada died from the cold that winter. The storm finally broke on February the 9th, and towns began to dig out. By spring, the blizzard was a distant memory. But those who lost loved ones can never forget the deadly winter of 47. For CBC NewsHour, I'm Bill Wazer.